So the first thing I want you to notice is this is not titled graphing systems of linear equalities. This is graphing linear inequalities. Inequalities can be put onto a, um, a graph whether we have a system of inequalities or not. You can put a single one on. We're going to start by putting a single one on and we're going to talk about what has to happen for that to happen, which we did a lot of this yesterday. The next thing we're going to talk about is how this changes when it's a system of inequalities. So the first thing you need to do is rearrange the equation into slope-intercept form. What is our variables when we think about slope-intercept form? Y and x plus Let's keep that in mind because right now it's in standard form. The difference here is instead of y equals mx plus b, we're going to have an inequality symbol. And all of the rules about inequalities apply here. So the first thing we're going to do is move that to x. And I get negative 3y is less than negative 2x plus 12. What's our next step? If I divide by negative 3 with an inequality, what's true? Go ahead and say it out loud, Ty. The, the inequality symbol is not going to be less than anymore. It's going to be greater, greater, than. greater than. So y is greater than 2 thirds x minus 4. Now to think about graphing this, we need to think about our slope and our y-intercept, which you guys did yesterday when you created this from equations. Our slope in this case is 2 over 3, and our y-intercept is negative 4. Where are we going to start? We're going to start on the y-axis, and we're going to find negative 4. And I'd like you to write that point next to it. It's 0, comma, negative 4. And we're going to use our slope to find another point. We're going to go up 2 and 3 to the right. right. We're making a positive slope because our slope here is 2 over 3. And so we're going to go to the right. Now, before you draw your line in, you have to look at the symbol. And our slope is greater than, not greater than or equal to. So what kind of line are we going to put? That. That's what's being asked down here. So let's fill this in as our graphic organizer. If it's a solid line, we're going to have greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. If we have less than or greater than, we end up with a broken line or a dashed line. We're only doing inequalities here. So because this inequality does not have an or equal to, this line is going to be broken. Now here's one of the big differences between graphing equations. If I was graphing the equation, if this said equal to, the line itself in solid form would be my answer. And any point that fell upon that line would be my answer. But with an inequality, this isn't just a line. This line is a boundary. As a visual person, I kind of see this almost like a, have you guys ever seen people cleaning up oil spills and they put those things in the water to try to keep it all on one side? Or like a fishing net? I see this as something that like goes out there and everything is on one side is trapped and everything on the other side is not part of it. 
That's what we're looking for here. This boundary line is telling us which side of this line is going to include our answers. And that's what this shade above or shade below part tells us. So if we have greater than or equal to or greater than, we shade above the line. If we have less than or equal to or less than, we shade below the line. So in this case, it is greater than, so we are shading above the line. So we shade everything that is above that line. Do you see what I mean about that visual of picturing like people cleaning up oil spills? We're trapping everything above this, but it can't go below it. Jeremiah, you're playing. Now, if this was a system of inequalities, there would be a second inequality. So I'm going to just give you a second inequality up here that I want you to write down. It's y is greater than or equal to 4x minus 4. We're going to graph that. It has some things in common. That's the same, same y-intercept. It has the same y-intercept. It's also greater than. This one just happens to be greater than or equal to. equal to. So the next thing we have to find from that negative 4 is where our next point is. And we're going to rise up 4 and run over 1. And this time we're going to make what kind of a line? And I'm going to shade above this line in a different color. So I want to make this really clear. When we have a system of inequalities, <coughs> there's a whole bunch of possible answers. And those answers all fall in the double shaded area. So again, if I was graphing this as y equals 4x minus 1, all of the answers would be points that fall on that line, right? When it's y is greater than or equal to 4x minus 1, for my equation or my inequality that I wrote in pink, anything above this pink line is an answer, including things down in this section. Anything for this inequality is above this line. But things that match for both are only in the double shaded area. So for instance, this point that I graphed on this line is an answer. That's 1 comma 0, and it falls on the solid line. And because a solid line includes or equal to, anything on that line fits this equation, or this inequality, I always do that. And because this is in the shaded region for this, this also fits. Find some other points. Like this is negative 2 comma 2. This is negative 1 comma negative 2. Anywhere where there's an exact point in the double shaded region is an answer for this system of inequalities. If they fall on my what's my pink line, 
and they're in the shade of green area, they also count. If it falls on this dashed line, a dashed line wouldn't count because it's just like when we had the open circle on the number line, we were saying anything above or below this, but not this. The dash line is saying it's a barrier, but things on it don't count. Okay. So I want you to go back to yesterday. And I want you to name for each graph three points that are an answer. I really think of these as like they're included. They're in that captured area. And I want you to come up with three points that are not included. So all of the ones that are included in this are going to fall in this double shaded region. And they might also fall on this solid line. But they will not fall on the dashed line. Any that are not included are going to fall in either a single shaded region or the non shaded region. Questions? So it could be any point inside of the double shaded. Yeah, so like this point right here. Do we have to be on the line? Nope. Or this point right here. Or this point right here. There's there's lots of them. The main thing is they have to be points in the double shaded region to be included. Or I could pick this one as an example of not. And this is an example of not. And this is an example of not. But name them. Over here I want the list of like what your XY pairs are. Okay. 